Okay. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. How are you? I'm good. How you I'm doing? Good. I'm going to invite some people, too. Yes, invite them. I love your friends. Thank you. Warby Parker. This is not sponsored, but if they want to sponsor me. Yeah, Warby it's coming with the sponsorship. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, hi, Brit. Hey, Brit. Social talks. Thank you guys for joining. Welcome to the Queen of Business podcast. We had some technical difficulties, but we here. So um, it's good to see you guys. It's good to see you, Simone. What time is it? Where are you at? Where are you at? Um, it's four ten right now. I am in Washington State. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, y'all. Okay, you over there, I'm over here, Washington yeah. State, Washington Right, State. other Washington. <laughs> <laughs> the evil twin, which one is the evil twin? That's DC probably. <laughs> I mean, y'all have better weather right now, so I feel like y'all are winning. It's pretty, pretty evil over here. It's still. The weather up here be doing too much. Like, okay. it was hot yesterday and it was cold today, and I, I just can't, I can't keep up. I really can't keep up. Oh, Oh, wow. But I would take some warmth. I would take some warmth. It's just That's great. true. That's true. That's the Florida in us. The Florida in us. I know, but I've acclimated. I enjoy it. It's my I do too. <laughs> I love my four seasons. Like I don't want to go back. I love the four seasons. I yes. So uh, we are going to discuss positive affirmations today with Simone Taylor. Um, I don't know if you go by another pseudonym, but I mm -hmm. you know who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm from back in the day, yeah. so I get to call you uh, by your real name. Yeah, so. you knew me as Simone or like <laughs> other like nicknames, funny nicknames, Moni probably mm -hmm. or Mo now. Like, yeah, but we go way back before like Mo healing. <laughs> yes. So tell tell us where you're from and how you know me. Well, I am from a little town by the water <laughs> in Brevard <laughs> County in me and Shay were, oh my God. Brevard County in Florida. Yes, in Florida. <laughs> um, we were in a very white space. And <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Girl. And me and Shay, it's actually funny. Like, very funny, actually. We had some beef at some point. Some good beef. <laughs> But it's like teenager like craziness but it was cool like Shay and some other people we created like our own little community within this like really really white space yes. and we are part of the business academy so like look at us now like entrepreneurs before we were even here so like it was pretty cool uh growing up at you know in that space and meeting mm -hmm. shay shay i always like going to shay's family's house they're always having like a party or like yes <laughs> girl we <be> lit <laughs> yes but it was cool it was always like good vibes and like as we got older we just continued to like stay in touch and through the power of social media i feel like helped that as well and yeah like it's been um over 10 years now like it's mind-blowing like oh my gosh it's been a while oh, 2010 yeah, yeah 13 years it has and i do remember <laughs> so i remember all the beef we had but i had this sweet 16 that everybody said they were coming to and somebody else threw one better without parents and nobody came and i remember you were the first person to show up at my sweet 16. yes like, oh she liked me <laughs> I'm like, after we tried to fight us, soon, she liked me still. <laughs> oh my gosh, of course. I don't even, I don't even remember that other party. That's actually funny. Like, it's how we remember at the, at the skating rink. Oh, barely. Barely. Yes. Your but, party was at the skating rink, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah, I remember your party, but like the other person who your competition, I don't remember them. Maybe I didn't get invited. I might not have been in it the was, circle. Um, it was the other circle that we discussed earlier. We'll have to go back to that later. <laughs> <laughs> it 
was the other kids of the other oh kids. yes 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 but i feel like we did a lot of things like separately unfortunately i feel like that's just kind of like just some of the trauma within the south because i remember we had like our little prom crew mm -hmm. homecoming crew mm -hmm. like we did it up and oh look there go trevor <laughs> trevor that's my boo so like yeah like i feel like yeah we had like our own little community i wasn't worried about none of the people because like Ugh. me neither really <laughs> oh. and you know that's what i always loved about you because you just was not worried about nothing and i'm like i love her she's confident in who she is you was confident in who you was in high school and it wasn't too many of those people and me and you were both very secure and i believe it's the family background yeah. too like you said uh, my family they were very supportive your mom i remember your mom and your sister being at everything yes. like having a supportive background is like very important growing up as a kid definitely but yes so the purpose of positive affirmations is to basically overcome your negative thoughts and make yourself feel good about yourself you know daily positive affirmations are meant to um minimize negativity and help to fill your fill your mind free your mind of negative and cloudful judgment so you are the author of affirmations for the young black and healing i got yes. my book honey. she is an author you know young black author i just love it y'all know i love mm -hmm. books so it was only fitting that i have her on here so simone before we get into this book what do you do for a living? <laughs> I was looking at that question earlier. I'm like, that is so long. I, to make it simple, my day job, I'm mm. a therapist. Um, I am a community activist. I'm a healer. I'm a creative. Uh, I teach yoga. I'm a birth and death doula. So I help people bring life into the world and I assist people on their way out. Um, but most of all, my goal is just to, and like my, I think life path here is to create mm -hmm. spaces for black people to heal and to reclaim, you know, just who we are. We had healing ways of healing before we got to this intercontinental space and just reminding us who we are. We get so many messages um, mm -hmm. in the day to day. And so like when you, when I saw that, I was like, what do I do? I do so much, but I would just simply say like a healer and uh, a catalyst for healing and change in our community. I like that. I like that a lot. So, um, how has your line of work? Cause you've done a lot. I am curious about the death doula. I've mm -hmm. never heard of that. But I can kind of imagine, it. I guess it's just, you know, being there with people in their final moments. Yeah. Okay. So how has that journey, like, with all of your experiences, how did that shape where you are now? Wow. Uh, so much. I met so many cool people. I've met mm -hmm. Holocaust survivors. I've met inventors. I've met authors. Mm -hmm. um and the one thing that we all have in common is we are going to die so how can we spend and like have quality of life as we are right now and so i actually got into wellness like i got into social work through like just having a really cool professor who taught me about policy mm -hmm. and changing of policy and i got into yoga through a really cool um nurse she was like come mm -hmm. to a yoga class with me and so i did that i got a group on and then i was there like faithful because that was like probably the first time i've ever felt like calm and rest in my black body and like safe and like safe with the people who are around me um as well that i could just like let my guard down and then i got the opportunity to teach yoga at a birth justice event and that's mm -hmm. how i got into doula work and Mm -hmm. um yeah i was working in hospice when i met my nursing friend and so everything that i'm doing now is kind of like full circle just seeing what i saw within the system and wanting just to create more like natural spaces for healing mm -hmm. um we can heal within our communities we don't need fancy technology we don't need all these people we don't need you know all this extra stuff that we've created within Western medicine to like, oh, you know, this is healing. But like also what you say to yourself every day is also healing or making okay. you sick too. 
Right, which is where the positive affirmations come from. Yeah. Um, so tell us more about your book. Uh, what what started your journey to writing this book? The pandemic, actually. I was <laughs> at home going through grief. I just lost like family members from COVID. I had just lost friends from other reasons, my cousin for another reason. But like being at home, I left like grief of leaving an abusive relationship. But no one ever tells you like, after you leave certain situations, you still have to find ways of healing, find ways of like learning new messages. Like when someone's put in like, you know, tape recorded negative messages to you for so long. Um, so I just started writing and this book actually started in the notes section of my cell phone. Like I would be up at 2 a.m. crying, trying to find like ways to inspire myself for the next day. Uh, I'm about to start crying <laughs> and trying to find ways. This to... is a safe space. Yeah, I know. And I'm a cry baby. I'm very in tune with my emotions. And like, I I'm like, that. you gotta like let it go. Um, yes, definitely. Because literally, I would write things, and sometimes I like wake up out of my sleep. So I also think it was divine, and I think it was like all of the people who I was like mourning pouring into me mm -hmm. um, at those times of like just messages. Like I'm like, I don't even know where some of this stuff came from, but I'm gonna write it down because I'm up. It might be three in the morning, but I'm up and I'm like, I'm clearly getting this message for a reason. And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm going to do it for a year and see if I can come up with 365 of these affirmations. And yeah, it I love it I over love a year. <laughs> Thank you. That is like really amazing because I, I have people, um, I do, I teach a class on positive affirmations as well, but also in that series of classes that I teach. I have people write one thing they're grateful for every day, like a gratitude journal. And then I had them writing one thing, affirming themselves. So I had like this affirmation, um, kind of like a map. So it was like the I am, I will, I can, and then it nice. was something in the middle and then something at the end. And it was like different things that they can pick from to make their own affirmations of people. Because I think a lot of people have a hard time affirming themselves. Yeah. So I believe, like you said, in you writing this book, it helped you heal because you were thinking of new things every day. And when I got your book, I really, um, it's not a book you read straight through, but it was a book that I just was like, you know, kind of like how I do like my Bible reading. I just opened it and was like, Lord, show me something today. I love it. And the one thing yeah. that I saw, yes, the one thing that I saw was um, healing my heart allows me to receive and give love to myself and others. And I think this was, your affirmation for day 176 and I think that was really good because you can't give love until your you know until your heart is healed until you feel um what is the word confident in who you are and a lot of people do not realize that that's why they say hurt people hurt people yeah because when you're hurting in your heart you can't give out the proper love to the people around you and I just love that like this book has so many different affirmations in it so I thank you for doing that because you, like you said, you started in your note section and I'm an author too. So it's a whole bunch of gems in our note section. <laughs> Always. I like go through your notes, y'all. Y'all have like money in their manifestation yes. waiting for you in your note section. If you That's use it. so true. Like a lot of people's phones hold money, like you said, and they're out here struggling and don't even know that they have like gold right here. But um, I like that you actually went through with it because a lot of people have it in their notes section. They're never going to do yeah. nothing with it. It's just going to sit there. And I believe God gives us knowledge to share. And a lot of people don't share it. They just keep it to themselves or they feel like what they have to say is not important. And I believe everybody has something different to say. Like everybody has something different to say. Everyone has a different audience because your audience is not going to be my audience. We may be saying the same thing, yeah. but it's different people who are going to listen to you that are going to listen to me. Yeah, it's very different. So what was your goal? Like you said, you started writing in your um, notes and then you decided, oh, this could be a book and you put it in a book. Like what was your goal or what was your intended audience? Um, my intended audience is for anyone who is dealing with negative thoughts, dealing with wanting to relearn new ways of speaking to themselves mm -hmm. um anyone black 
that's healing. I think mm -hmm. that there is always, you know, something that we can do to, you know, affirm ourselves, to affirm what we're doing. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not going to be the people around you. So how can you, you know, be your cheerleader and affirm yourself? Um, because oftentimes I do a lot of crazy stuff. People are like, what are you doing? But mm -hmm. it's going to work out because I believe in that and like my words and the things that I say to myself fuels that, um, you know, manifestation. Right, right. Um, Star Steven says, what do you do when you do a self-assessment of the moment or past event and afterwards you feel indifferent, like not mad or not happy, just in the middle? nothing i just move on i don't know i feel like a lot of people are stuck in the past mm -hmm. and not present i, react I don't it. really spend a lot of time yeah like going in the past and i encourage people to not spend but like, here's something you can do about changing it so like i don't know i mean emotions are just that they're just emotions we can then choose how we allow that emotion to change our behavior are you right. then going to like engage in behaviors that are going to help you and be aligned with where you want to be or are you going to engage in behaviors that are going to take you down maybe a pattern or a path that you don't want to go or you maybe you are already right. in this pattern and path so i mean i don't know i think that's I, something I, that you would have to like figure out what that means for you personally mm -hmm. and what you can do with that indifference and maybe the lesson behind whatever event and moving forward. I think that's the key because they're saying if they not feel mad or sad or happy, yeah. then figure out why you went through that. If you don't have no emotions to it and it's not bringing you to a bad place, figure out why you went through that mm -hmm. and find the lesson so that you don't repeat it again. Because yeah. many times you repeat the same things over and over and over again because you didn't learn your lesson. Exactly. <laughs> that's literally life. Honestly, <laughs> think about it. And then, like, yeah. if it's not a person, maybe it's a situation. Maybe then you go through, like, a habit of mm -hmm. shopping too much mm -hmm. or a habit of maybe mm -hmm. I gain too much, you know, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that that's where we have to look at. Sometimes patterns aren't even our patterns. Sometimes patterns right. are generational patterns that we're now repeating to, exactly. like... And sometimes I, I find myself, I don't do it so much anymore because I've recognized that I'm doing it negatively. Mm -hmm. But I found myself, you know, if, if there was an event that would make me angry every time I think about it, I would think about it and still try to get angry. <laughs> and then one day I found out I'm not what, even angry about that no more. What are you like, even doing I'm though? Healed. You're like... <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm healed. I'm moving forward. I'm not going to keep trying. Like, one day I was so, it was an event that happened and I used to cry about it every time I would think about it. And mm -hmm. one day I was like, oh, hmm. And I was like, <laughs> Well, I'm not, I'm, no tears, so yeah. I guess I'm good. I'm getting yeah, so good. Yeah, like, it's why done. I'm trying to bring trauma memories back. Like, I was like, there's no reason for me to eat, even go back there. Just don't even think yeah. about it. Because, because some people love living in their victimhood. Yes. I think that, like, if you don't feel empowered enough to use that fuel of what happened mm -hmm. to you to, like, project you somewhere, then yeah, you're gonna be a victim. And so I've learned for a long time, like I'm not gonna be a victim. So let's take the lesson in that L and see how we can turn it into some other letters. Um, yeah, I mean, I've sold t-shirts, shameless plug, little t-shirts <laughs> after yes. some hurt. People are like, why are you selling t-shirts? Because it's a way for me to use the energy of what happened to me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people vibe with it. And so if it resonates, um, it's going to help someone else heal. So, like, right, yeah. Right. It's That's all about how you use Um, Sir Steven says, I've been practicing gratitude a lot more lately. And for me, that got me out. Yes, that got you out of the victim mindset. For me, too. For me, too. Um, I agree with that. So, these are your, all of your own personal affirmations, or you have other just um, regular affirmations? No, these are all. All straight from the dome, straight from the heart, mm -hmm. straight from the divine. So they're from my all of ancestors. They're all mine, and nobody can steal them. So y'all make sure y'all credit who uh -huh. got it. It's in the Library of Congress. It's uh -huh. mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're all my thoughts. And that's yeah. The, well, no, that's not what I was asking. I was asking like, are they affirmations for uh you? Or I mean, they're for, that you yeah, did. they're for me. I use them, but I'm just saying, like, they're all like super. Like, you actually came up with 300. Like, yeah, those are literally 365 words that came from me. That's yeah, it was. It's real. <laughs> like, I'm that's like, yeah, good. All things that I use 
uh -huh. all things that I like when I wrote it down the next day, you know, meditated on. Um, yeah, like it's, I don't know how <laughs> either. I'm like, that's a lot. When I was like looking at the word count and I'm like, I literally wrote little chicken scraps too on paper. Like if I wasn't at home and I wasn't like by my phone, wrote on like paper, I'm like, I gotta revisit this. Mm -hmm. Like it might've been in like a Zoom meeting wrote mm -hmm. down like I'm like ooh, let me write this uh -huh. down like yeah just as it came to me I'm like I needed that let yeah. me write it down yeah I even had like being Mary Jane type <laughs> I have sticky notes everywhere, everywhere. that's I how believe. it also like kind of started so like okay well if I can write out a lot of these and like just put them places and see mm -hmm. them every day mm -hmm. um it probably would be really helpful so yeah I use them they are like affirmations that I also have used and like refer to you that's good that's good I understand when I was writing my book um the keys to healthy friendships I wrote I think 40 I think it's 42 keys to healthy friendships and someone was nice. like how did you come up how did you come up with all that and I'm like experience like the divine yeah <laughs> yourself yeah I yes, feel like some I of it was just given to me like yeah because yeah. i'm like i did not have this wisdom but now i do and i'm going to use it so yeah that's good that's good so what do you want people to take away from the book um that like our words have power uh our words have power and they transcend like far beyond us like the cool mm -hmm. part is like through this affirmation whatever affirmation someone uses maybe they share it with their child maybe they share it with like someone else yeah. and like yeah it, our words literally either speak life or death to mm -hmm. us so I feel like I just want people to recognize the power of their words and maybe mm -hmm. if you aren't having like positive thoughts maybe mm -hmm. you could choose a day to change them and you know change your life right right I agree so do, do you have you done like um you know, speaking engagements or have you gone like what have you spoken to different age brackets? Like what are the differences that you've noticed in like, you know, affirmations when it comes to like the young versus mm. middle age versus old? Yeah. I mean it just depends. And also depends on like where you like growing up or your caregivers um people who spoke life into you or they were they negative people because of what happened to them. I mean, definitely I love like the Gen Z's, the babies, they're, they are affirming themselves. They affirm mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I learn a lot from, from the youth mm -hmm. as well. I worked with the youth and I feel like they have a lot of confidence and most kids do until a negative adult comes with their mindsets and changes Period. things. And so, their view of the world, yeah. Mm -hmm. So That's I love when a boomer gets my book because I feel like if a boomer gets my book, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can change some things, you know, within systems that are already in place too. Or and you know, everybody has the power to change their mind. I haven't done any touring. I haven't done any like speaking engagements as far as like my book. But I've had people say that they want to share it with teenagers. They want to share it with you know people of all ages because I think it's something that everyone, if you're breathing, you have the power to benefit and like change your quality of life. If you are, un, you know, unhappy with something in your life, you can change that. You might not be able to change everything, but you can start by changing your thoughts and making them, I don't want to say more positive, but making them more aligned to the mm -hmm. life that you want to live. Agree. And hopefully the life you want to live is positive so you can yes. stay more positive. <laughs> yes. But I just like, I like, don't want to get into like the whole toxic positivity because that would be dismissing <laughs> that like... We have duality. Sometimes we have, you know, positive and, you know, negative emotions at the same time. And how do you live and be present with that? Because they are just that emotions. Thoughts are just that thoughts. Um, I, rec I recognize that a lot of the older generation, they have a problem positively affirming themselves because nobody positively affirmed them. So mm. they didn't have necessarily someone especially African-American homes, a lot of the older yeah. generation, they were growing up in times that were tough. Yeah. They didn't all uh, have great opportunities like we have now. So their parents themselves wasn't trying to positively affirm. They were trying to provide trying and make sure- to Survive. They weren't, yeah. Weren't, yeah, trying to survive, <laughs> making sure they weren't getting hung and stuff like that. So 
they didn't have that so they didn't know how to return that favor to us and yeah. now like our generation we kind of just had to take it by the bootstraps and be like well, i'm going to positively affirm myself like i don't mm -hmm. need nobody to do it for me and that's that's great like you said the kids are affirming themselves and that's awesome i love that we have that type of self-confidence as um a generational whole especially all the things that we went through growing up in this america and all the trauma that we've seen, just like September 11th, COVID, Columbine, right. um, all the de deaths, like just certain things that we've seen just in our generation by itself, we have to keep positively affirming ourselves because mm -hmm. it's not like nobody going to do it for us. Exactly. Um, Corinne Marie says, do you have a favorite affirmation or an affirmation that you think was the most powerful in your life? I she don't love you too bro I was like hard <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see I don't have one but I'm gonna choose one right now real quick okay Ooh, I, I want to look with you I want to look with you so this is on page 33 okay um mm, I'm gonna go I think that these are like ones that are really good for me. Like they all are. that first one I said, that's her all the way. <laughs> yes, I released <laughs> expectations based on me by capitalism and white supremacy. Like I'm taking vacation. I'm taking time off. Yeah. I will not Don't care. And I'm not working hard. And there's a good chance if I'm working for someone, I might be watching Netflix at some point. Because <laughs> they're not they are not taking all of my soul. So yes. That's yes. great. I think because that I tell you know all the time. If you if, if you if you pass away tomorrow, they'll have somebody new in your seat. So take your time, take your leave, yes. do what you gotta do, take care of your health days, do what you have to do. Yes. Everything. Yes. Important. It is I, so important. I, I learned that at like my first job, like mm -hmm. not to be morbid and trigger warning, y'all. Like my first job, I had a coworker that had a stroke and People thought she just, like, no call, no showed. Mm -hmm. And she literally, like, passed away. And that changed how I functioned in jobs and, like, how I, like, no, if I don't feel good, I'm calling in. Maybe I feel good. I'm just sick of y'all. I'm calling in. Period. That's sick. I'm allergic to y'all today. Period. And I might come back with some box sprays because <laughs> that was my medicine. That's self-care. <laughs> Yes, it is. I have a friend, her coworker says something about her when she goes to get her hair done. I'm like, anyways, like, that ain't her business. Yes, and our hair as black women, it's in, like, black fems, it's tied so much to, like, how we feel about ourselves, our yes. words, yes. our, like, how people perceive us, like, how we perceive ourselves, how people treat you. Mm -hmm. I've noticed since I've cut my locks off and I've been having, like, this little fro, people treat me different ways when I wear my wigs, people treat me different ways, like, yes, it's funny, though, but it's, like, it's real. It's so much part of our identity. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to let you dictate, you know, how I spend and take care. We have to take care of ourselves because exactly. Exactly. they might send a flower. They might not. They don't pack your little stuff up in a box and be like, a uh, Mexican, come get this. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, they're not going to care that much. Yeah, so that Especially helps. when you're working for these huge corporations. Like, if you work at a mom and pop, yeah, they, they probably Yeah, it might. It's Different. But if you're working different. for like the government or Amazon, yeah. take your day off. <laughs> you are ID two yes. eight three Infant one number X five three four three. Literally. <laughs> so I mean, I feel like all of these affirmations like are helpful. But that was funny. I was like, let me just pick one. I feel like they've all served a purpose and like have different meanings or different times in my life I like even so, find myself writing things out right so when you go through this book when you see like you see that one do you remember the story behind you making that one mm -hmm. I was probably pissed off about a job <laughs> no not that one specifically oh yeah like that one yeah but when just you, like when any you, of them like, let's see yeah do you do, you, do they have like meaning to you because you know some people have memories off a of song yeah some of them do yeah like like that one probably like about a job um most of them I feel like are like especially the loved ones are about a specific relationship mm -hmm. <laughs> and like healing from relationship some of them are also like healing from friendships mm -hmm. uh 
Yeah. It's just no, really I'm funny. big on that friendship thing. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really cool. Ooh, and like attachments. Like I've been dealing with like attachment theory and like studying about my own like attachment mm -hmm. styles. So like yeah. It was inspired by my own healing. <laughs> Good. Like, really. So when you finished the book, were you um were you like, dang, I should have added this or I have more to add. I have a part two or mm -hmm. how do you feel? How were you after you finished the book? I like sat on it for a little bit and mm -hmm. then something happened that pissed me off and I was like, I'm gonna publish this book now. <laughs> Like, literally, it was just, like, I sat on it, and, like, it was just, like, something was, like, a catalyst. I feel like anger is, uh -huh. like, something that, like, fuels me to, like, get uh -huh. things done, and I'm, like, I'm such an Aries. I'm, like, okay, I'm gonna use that energy. I'm about to do it, but I didn't Did you um, like, self-publish? I did self-publish, okay, so good. I don't think I want to add anything. I do have other book ideas in mind. Like, I want, like, a sci-fi. I have, like, a sci-fi, like, thriller that's in on deck. Oh, we'll be reading that in book club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if you especially like zombies, it's, it's lit. Um, I might be doing like some mental health books. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. There might be a part two. You never know. I don't know. Maybe, okay. probably. You never. I'm open. Like I'm very like go with the flow. Whatever happens. I mean, but it was it served its time yeah. and purpose, so it might not be a part yeah. two. Yeah. It might so, not. Sir Stevens asked, what did you learn about yourself while writing the book? I mean, hmm. I don't know. Mm. I have no clue. I mean, I just learned to keep doing things, take breaks. I mean, just because I took a break with it didn't mean that I was, like, done with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I don't know. I think, like, I learned a lot of grace just for myself. Um yeah, I think it was a really cool, like, practice of, like, being patient because people are like, oh, I wrote a book, like, in a weekend or whatever. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> like, you rushed through it. But I feel like I, like, birthed this book. Like, you know what I mean? I, like, it, it developed over time. It developed with me. I went back and I, like, edited, edited things it. over time. Yeah, so I feel like it was it was like a labor of love and for me it just taught me how to just continue to do something and like just see it through that was a really good passion project for the pandemic i feel like it was just like something i look forward to um a labor of love is beautiful yeah you know i understand my first it was a labor of love too yes. so yes i definitely it's like Books just mean so much more when you know the story behind them, when you know the person put their best foot forward, they had their blood, sweat, and tears in this book. It just means so much more than, like you said, somebody who just rushed through it in a weekend just because they're talented. But you can be talented at writing, but did you put your heart yeah. into it? My yeah. My intentions are in it. My heart's in it. Like, yeah. literally, uh, crying. Uh, like literally I like can remember so vividly just myself like oh. yes girl <laughs> like, this book, like, babbling I feel you girl I feel I feel you wholeheartedly when I was writing my book I'm like oh this is not I'm not gonna be able to finish today because it's just too many tears <laughs> right and you want to but it's mm -hmm. like you want to it's like I want to it's from the heart. I don't know how many times I had to pick myself up and, you know, let me go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> let me get some water. Okay. I'll, yeah. let, me, let me start back over. <laughs> it, it, it definitely yeah. is true, but It's a beautiful one. Yeah. And like I said, the book just means so much more. And I'm it definitely does. happy the book. And I got my little autograph. My autograph book. I'm so Yay. happy. Can we do, like, a giveaway? Can we give one away? Sure. So okay. we have nine people watching. I don't know how we want to do this. You want to, like, pick a number? I have a number in mind. Okay. Y'all it... watching, pick a number between... Zero to 100. Zero to 100. Closest person gets a book. Yes. And then send send us both, like, your info. And then we will... Okay, I'm going to give y'all 10 seconds to run okay. back to y'all phones for y'all that sat the phone down and y'all cooking dinner right now. Because it's 4.44. I'm like, it's so divine. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's 444 where you're at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm assuming Uncovered by Nicole is in your city, too. No. Oh, so, hey, Nicole. That's my soror. She's in Orlando. Oh, okay. Uh, 407 all day. Okay. Okay. So, I got uh, 566, 44, 11, 78, and 99. So, the number was 92. How did we? Wow. So, yeah. it's um, Corinne Marie. Yeah, Corinne's the closest. Woo woo. Hey. Okay, Corinne. Okay. So, DM me or DM Simone. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just message us. Okay. I want to make sure that, yeah, you get it and then you're connected with Queens and Business as yes. well. Yes. And yay. Thank you guys for participating. I want to do some more giveaways now. What can I yeah. say? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. Yes. So, Corinne, you got affirmations for the young black in healing. Yay. And. Mm -hmm. By Simone. So this is going to be a great look for you. Um, yes, that's awesome. I thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining today. And Simone, you got any last parting words? Uh, this was a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. And my book is on Amazon. If you would like a signed copy, slide in my DMs. I will mail you one. And... Yeah, stay tuned. I definitely want to be like I'm planning a healing retreat. Um, so like stay tuned. We'll be talking a lot about affirmations and just like let's manifest. We have the power to like heal ourselves, generations to come with our words. So like let's do this. I think it's really awesome how we're all healing. I love this like healing culture and like this I do like shit. I do too. You said something earlier about toxic pos toxic positivity. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, it's when we negate the fact that like, oh, when people tell you like, I'm sad about it. Well, just be happy because you got okay. a car. Just okay. be happy because you have your dog, right? Just mm -hmm. be happy. Like the people that choose to like, well, you know, like, yes, I can be grateful and I can also say that maybe like that person didn't yeah. give me the kindness or yeah. maybe losing my pinky toe like really is a sucky situation. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> like, like, at least it's not your hand. Yeah, like at least you got your pinky finger. Like, okay, <laughs> but I want my pinky toe. Like, right, ooh. okay. And I feel like sometimes that's why it brought it to my remembrance because sometimes I feel like people overheal. Like, oh, I don't want to yes. deal with you because I'm healing right now. Or I don't want because I'm healing. That's triggering my healing. And it's like, no, you need to have this conversation. Yeah. You don't care how it's um, messed up with your healing. But I, pe I think people use that as toxic healing. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Uh, no, there's a that. lot of, like, toxicisms mm -hmm. that we do in our community. And I think it all goes back to like gaslighting and like yeah. negating that person's experience when in reality like let's validate everyone everybody's mm -hmm. experience is valid and, mm -hmm. and it's acting differently mm -hmm. and how can we show up and like i might not understand what you're going through but i mm -hmm. can see you know a human suffering or i can see someone going through something and want to support you know right. them. and if right. you don't know what to say that's a great time to ask someone how can I support you like I don't know what to say like what can I do you know to be a good friend to be a good right. parent whatever it is to support right. you right sit in those emotions and feel them that's what dear yeah. say, oh, just be happy there just be happy there's starving kids in Africa how many times have we heard that one yeah eat all your food they're starving kids in Africa and now people got complexes for no reason <laughs> and I'm like okay well can I get them the food that I'm about to waste I don't think so, so. exactly and some people in Africa are not starving I think that also goes back to yes. how we have been marketed uh yes. yeah you know places we got people in America that are starving if we yes. were like, look, which is so funny out your back door. yeah like Come in your neighborhood. neighborhood yeah, yeah. like <laughs> Yeah, so that's like a slippery slope. And I think that's where we have to, you know, look at 
sometimes we don't understand what someone's going through, but how can we, you know, expand our ability to, you know, be open to someone else's experience? Right, right, right. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for joining the Transformation Tuesday podcast. Queen of Business appreciates you guys. Um, I will have the details for Simone's book. I saw uh, Ashley, you asked for them. I will DM those to you. Anybody else who wants them, you can find Simone at Mo underscore Healy. And all of her book information will be on that page. You can find the book, Affirmations for the Young, Black, and Healing on Amazon. Just type it in and it'll come up. Or you can type in her name, Simone Taylor, and it will also come up. Great book. And if you want an autograph copy, of course, DM her and you can she she will send you a book so you can get your autograph. Is it an extra fee for the autographing? Yeah, it is. I do have to like do the whole post office thing, y'all. So you know, with Amazon they do it, but then they don't have me there. But then when I do it, I'm a one woman, black woman business. So you know, we definitely have to pay black women for their efforts and their labor. So how much extra is it for you to get it? Get, um, get your I I think it just depends on their zip code because I know the way. Oh, you're just code. talking about shipping, so it's not extra for the autograph. It's no, just... it's not like, like extra oh, okay. for that. I think okay. it's like a little bit more, but not much more. <laughs> like yeah. when we break it down, because you know Amazon takes their fees. And you know you can ship media mail. Yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's what I do <laughs> for you. <laughs> Okay, girl, I didn't look at it. I just ripped the package open. I was like, yes, it's here. <laughs> Christmas. I didn't even look at it all. Yay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining. I just want to plug, I'm having a Memorial Day field day here in D.C. at RFK Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I am taking donations if you want to donate. I plan on giving the kids um, equipment, toys, all those types of good stuff. Cars, food trucks, kickball, flag ball, flag football, all those good stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you want to donate, Queen of Business NP, that's the cash app. Um, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for joining. Hey, Trail. Hey, Adorn. Hey, King Blue. Thank y'all for joining, and I will see y'all next month. What are we talking about next mm -hmm. month? Empowerment. We talking about empowerment next month. So I'll see you guys next month. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Simone. Bye. Good catching up with you. It was good catching up with you too. Bye, girl. Take care. Bye.